Hi everyone, so today's video is going to be a fun one because I get to take you through the design proposal of a project that I'm currently working on. I'm super excited about it because it's a quite a nice mix of materials and textures and colors and the 3D renders have also turned out to be quite eclectic and fun. In my last video, I talked a lot about arranging furniture in the same space and if you've watched it, you might have caught a glimpse of this project. However, this video is about taking you through the 3D proposals to talk about the design elements like materials and colors and so on. So if you've not watched my previous video, it's okay, there's no problem, you can still enjoy this one. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to give you a little background about this project. We are actually combining two 1BHK flats to make it into a 4BHK which initially seemed like a tricky task but if you watch my previous video you'll see how I eventually figured it out and it might give you some good ideas for your own planning phase. So I'll link it in the description for those of you who are interested. So without further ado, let's dive into the nitty gritty of this design proposal. So while there is no right or wrong sequence with which materials you need to select first while developing a mood board, when you're stuck and you don't know where to start, I always encourage clients to start with materials that form the uh, shell or the structure of the space. So things like flooring, ceiling, walls, windows, doors, these are materials that you should first start with. For the flooring, we proposed a nice beige floor. We are still trying to figure out if we should go for a full body vitrified tiles or should we go for a more seamless look like a nice micro concrete flooring. But for now, beige is a go. As for the walls and ceilings, we went with white. We wanted the space to feel bright and spacious and having a neutral canvas to work with was key. Now let's talk about the AC units and fall ceiling. We didn't want the bulkheads, pelmets and all that to clutter up the space. So we kept everything on the wall and ceiling level in pure white. This way it blended in with the rest of the white backdrop and reduced visual clutter. Next up is doors. We decided to use oak veneer with a nice open green polish on it. This added a lot of textural value to the space and kept the feeling light and airy. We decided to go for taupe powder coated window uh, frames and choose the jam stone around the windows in a light tone as well. These things make up the backdrop against which the furniture will be placed. Once you have selected these foundational materials, you can then move on to selecting materials that will complement and enhance them. And there you have it guys. That was the lowdown of the colours and materials uh, selected for this project. Remember that the material board or the mood board is just a visual representation of what your design vision is. So do not be afraid to mix and match different materials until you find a combination that feels just right. And have fun in the process and let the creativity flow. Now our client uh, wishes to have pops of colour with an eclectic mix of you know traditional and modern elements and I thought it would make sense to add in some traditional elements here and there without going overboard. For example, we did a panel door with a nice moulding detail for the main entrance and we made it in a different colour than the rest of the wood doors to make the entrance feel special. We decided to keep all the other doors plain without any moulding details. Talking of the glass partition between the son's bedroom and the living room, we thought it would be nice to frame the glass partition in wood so that it matches with the rest of the wooden doors in the space. Mixing and matching furniture styles was also a big part of our proposal. We paired a classic bentwood turnet chair with a modern dining table that has straight lines. To add some colour, we chose green chairs for the dining area and for a modern touch, we opted for a sleek black wall light. So if we were to buy original turnet chairs, it's going to cost the client an arm and a leg. So only for representational purposes, I've simply plonked it in the 3D renders. But uh, we are planning to buy a ready-made option that looks similar to this classic Bentwood chair. Or the other option is that we can try and thrift it from Mutton Street uh, in Shor Bazaar since we are based in Mumbai. So they sell chairs which resemble the ones which are used in these old Irani cafes and since they are made in solid wood, they can be repurposed and uh, given this nice PU finish in uh, a green matte colour as shown in the renders. But that is subject 
to our luck finding three identical ones anyway we'll see but if you have any recommendations as to where i can source chairs similar to this classic piece then do let me know in the comments The design of the center table is intentionally sleek and modern, featuring a glass top and thin metal powder coated legs to balance everything else. The proportions and form of the table were derived with the sole purpose of making it accessible from all the seats and not hindering circulation in the main space. So for the cabinet on the left, we thought of adding a cool curved unit like this one. The curve gives it a traditional vibe but it's not too stuffy and has clean lines because the shutters don't have those fancy molding details like old school cabinets. Plus the scallop edges would be a cute touch to add a bit of that vintage charm. Okay, so let's talk about the crockery unit on the right. Designing it was an absolute blast. So I stumbled upon this Instagram account called uh, Devold Kitchens based out of the UK. They create some really gorgeous country style kitchen cabinets. I was drawn to this one picture in particular that had a hand painted back ply. It was such a unique and clever idea that I was inspired to incorporate it into our crockery unit design. We could then paint the entire unit in a nice PU uh, pigment color like this muted purple or some might say muted violet or muted aubergine call it whatever but the key is to make sure it's a toned down shade so that it doesn't compete with everything else in the room so you don't want it to be too loud and overwhelming it's totally cool to choose uh, the saturation that you like but in this particular case i wanted to strike a balance and so i went with this soft understated hue so when you're getting cabinetry custom made whether it's a laminate or a pu just make sure you choose a matte finish that part is super important because glossy surfaces drive me nuts they are just way too reflective i mean having a couple of shiny things here and there it's okay but when it comes to bigger stuff like cabinets and doors just forget about it because in most cases the amount of reflection is just too damn high and personally i'm like No thanks. I just don't feel good about it. But uh, what do y'all think? Um, are y'all with me on this? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on to the TV unit, uh, I figured it would be best to keep things nice and simple with the materials and form. So you know this regular straight lines, basic shape, no frills. Finishing touches like decorative light fixtures or certain decor objects and accessories can bring. the space to life and reflect your personal style I've kept the son's bedroom simple in terms of furniture color and even with the materials used here's a pro tip for you Don't go overboard trying to make every single piece of your home super unique or special. Trust me, you need to have a lot of humble and unassuming pieces that kind of set the backdrop uh, for your decor and only a few select items in the space need to be real standouts. And this is how you uh, get that rich luxe vibe without going overboard. our goal was to find that sweet spot between classic and contemporary styles with just enough color to create a space that has got a playful and eclectic feel so that's the wrap for our project and now it's your turn to chime in and let me know in the comments what part of the design you love the most